Chew, it's back for another one. Today, I'm gonna to be showing y'all some accessories for the Veteran Lynx. Now, the Veteran Lynx has been awesome. Pretty much the only thing I've changed on this thing, guys, since I've gotten it, is I've taken off the kickstand from the back of it, and that's easy. I just, it's literally just take off like four bolts right here on the back, and it comes right off, no problem. And then I took off, surprisingly, I took off those toe wings as soon as I got it. You know those wings that go on the front? because I do like just kind of a one piece power pad. It really gives you a lot of leverage on this thing and it sticks really well having one whole piece on here. Uh, that's just what I preferred to go with. And if you wanna make your Velcro stick to the side of this because the side of the Veteran Lynx, um, it almost is like a surface that the Velcro it has a hard time sticking to. So whenever I put the Velcro on here, I heated it up. I heated the surface up a little bit before I put the Velcro on it. And that really helped the Velcro stick down a lot better. So once you get your power pads kind of on there locked in and you find the place you like it, they'll get seated on that Velcro very well. From you kind of squeezing and riding it over time, it'll get to where it is hard to pull these things off of here after you ride it for a little bit with them especially. So that's just the way that my Lynx is looking right now and I haven't really changed it much, man. I, I really like the way it rides. I like the pedals on this thing. Um, I'm having a blast with it, guys. The I do want to get a knobby tire for it. Like I've had a great time with it riding it on road with the street tire, but I do want to change it up. This wheel is is dominant on road and off road, guys. So um, I definitely want to try it with the with the off road tire. I just think it will be incredible for trail riding. I, I've been able to trail ride it with this tire, guys, but it's just if it's muddy, if you get into corners where, where it's muddy, man, you'll get sideways on this thing. And I have fallen. Uh, I definitely have, you know had a few ass busters just from slipping out with this uh, street tire trying to push its limits while riding it uh, off road. So that's one thing I definitely want to try. And I'm wearing this tire down. You know, I do carve a lot while I'm riding on the road and stacking the miles on this thing, I, I am kind of wearing the tire down. So it will be time for a new one soon. So I'll be putting a, probably going with a, a, a knobby tire for sure. So we'll see about that. Um, but overall, I love this thing. And I just wanted to show you all the uh, seat for it as well as the pedal lowering kit. So since I have the street tire on it for right now and I'm gonna be doing some more street riding, I may as well lower these pedals so I can negate the speed wobble, or and negate the wobbles. Not necessarily speed wobbles, but having these pedals up so high and doing really sharp corners like on the mountain roads like I like to ride, it will be beneficial to lower these pedals a little bit. So that's what I got right here and we're gonna throw those on here. So, so right here, I got a the seat kit, the Lynx seat. And let's open this thing up, I'll show it to you. All right, so this is how this is how the seat for the links will come boxed. Open it up. What do you have in here? So let's see how this thing connects and everything. So this is the the main seat portion. It's going to go on the top, and then there's hardware that's going to connect it. And the hardware is, I think, like it's like red anodized aluminum. It looks really good. So let's take a look at this. Real quick, open this up. All right, so yeah, so this is the bracket. These are all the components right there. It comes with all the tools you need right there. Let's check it out. All right, and so now this, let's open this up real quick and see. Now this is gonna be the lowering kit. All right, so let's check this out. So you see how this comes packaged up in here? Now these are just gonna be brackets for the side and then basically it's just gonna drop um, the pedals down a little bit lower. So, so this is what these look like. And so I assume these just bolt on and they're just a little bit lower overall. Here, I'm gonna pop this thing up in the stand and we'll get to work. Now, if you guys wanna pick up one of these stands right here, I'll link one of these below. This one right here is a pretty heavy duty one. Uh, I like it because it, 
it, it works well for most wheels. It's not gonna be perfect, but it is, is way sturdier than anything that's gonna be 3D printed or something. If you're the type of person who just wants to kind of ram something in there and you know just <laughs> kind of forget it. Also guys, um, I'm working on something for my truck right now. These make a great system if you want to put these in the back of a SUV or a truck and you know either use some bolts to bolt them down or some tie downs and then you have a permanent kind of place to keep your wheel in the back of your car, keep it from sliding around. And you can really, um, you can lock this thing as well. So if you want to lock this portion back here to where it doesn't open, you can do that. And it's perfect for keeping these wheels in your truck or car. So one little tip right there. Set up right now where I've got the street tire on it and I'm mainly doing street riding. I just need a little bit more uh, stability, a little bit lower pedals going into my corners. And these are exactly what these are made for. Be upside down. So make sure you put it this way, like that, where it looks nice. Lock tight these, boom, thread those in there. Boom, so. Not too, you know, I gotta get them too tight, but that Loctite should hold them on there. Nice, clean looking design, dude, look, that's awesome. And these right here, I'm gonna put Loctite, these two set screws that go on the front. So I assume you gotta take this off, this front bar right here, and then it pops on. Here, just take a, I think this is a five, five millimeter Allen wrench right here, pretty sure. Take this front little bar off, just unscrew one side of it. One, two, three, four, and then this one right here. All right, that should pop off, there we go. Okay, see how that comes off perfectly easy like that? So yeah, just four bolts, and four bolts, and then this one in the middle, and then you take this, and we'll slide this right over here. And there's these set screws, these little set screws that are gonna tension this, back this out a little bit. Definitely gonna Loctite these guys. These little screws like this have got to be Loctited. Like thread locker guys, if you work on these electric unicycles, you gotta have this stuff because, I mean, if you ride hard, you will eventually, it won't happen within like a year, but if you ride hard on these things for thousands of miles, you'll start losing little bolts. You just need to go over it and just check and make sure that everything is kind of Loctited. On a wheel like this, probably not, because they have these lock washers behind everything, and these screws are really, really well set in here. But on a few other ones, maybe you know, maybe a few older wheels and stuff, you might want to go back over it and just throw some thread locker on there, because it, it helps a lot. A lot of people know that, but some people don't. Put that on there. See how that just slides right over? Boom! It looks like that. Very cool design. I do like it. There you go. Makes a dead gum mess, but it's worth it. Alright. Yeah, definitely Loctite those little screws, brother. I don't see those staying in there at all without Loctite. Just like that. Alright. Now we'll tighten these down. Not too tight, because I don't I want it to kind of break loose if I crash and not damage anything and these screws you don't mess with these just kind of stay like they are that pops into place like that a, drill a hole in it all the way through it like a nice clean hole with a little gap in it use a piece of velcro to wrap through here and then that would keep everything in place in the event of a crash but if you needed to get to the trolley handle you could flip this up and pop the trolley handle up and roll on there's definitely a way to do it. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I think it is cool. So this is definitely something for the people that, that don't crash a lot. That want something, you know, they're going to just cruise, not crash a lot. Um, this is what this is for. But I just see this flying off <laughs> in, a, in a violent crash, bro. So I, can, I really do like the links a lot. Like the whole... How I could just take the kickstand off the back right there. If you don't want the toe things, you can take those off. If you don't want the seat, you can easily pop the seat off of here, obviously. You know, and then this goes right back on there. Like, I like the design. The design's great, man. They nailed it with this wheel. Top-notch wheel, bro. It's amazing because the Lynx is so dominant right now. Like, the Lynx is just dominating the race circuit. Uh, people just, they get this wheel. It's... It, 
immediately. It's, it's like, there's no point of having any other electric unicycles once you get this one. There's really no point, dude. Like, this is so much better than every other electric unicycle I own right now. It's, it's an amazing, bro. Like, that's why I literally want one with a, a knobby tire and a street tire. So, since I'm putting the lowering kit on this thing, uh, then this thing's gonna be all like a strictly street wheel at that point. So I really do want a knobby tire um, links for sure. This thing is sweet, man. This wheel is awesome. It's so much fun. Definitely wild, man, how, how far these things have come, man. I was just thinking about it the other day, like how I was just always just cruising around Denver all slow on those wheels and having so much fun, dude, just going so slow, but it's crazy to me now how fast these are and it and in, in a way like I love how far these things have come and how fast they are now but I was just thinking like man if I got a wheel that went this fast is my first wheel it would have taken so much of that early fun of just cruising around seeing the sights in the city seeing all the people all the crazy stuff going on because on a wheel like this you're just going so fast all the time. You don't really have a chance. And you can ride it slow, of course. You don't have to ride it fast. But, I mean, if you got a wheel that'll go as fast as this one, of course you're going to ride it fast. So, it's just one of those things. I was really thinking about it the other day. I was like, man. I was like, it would just be completely different now of how I would use this thing. Like, especially for all the people that are seeing now, like electric unicycles, and getting one for the first time. You're seeing all the riders ride these things at, at such fast speeds. And then, like, it's so different from where, where we, how we actually learn these things, man. Like, we were going slow on these things to learn. And I was just giving it a high praise that it would go together so easy. Now it's been a pain in the ass. Cool. All right, so, that's the seat. Definitely be much comfort, comfier position. First little mod is done. The seat, it's pretty cool. Like, I, I definitely like it, so check it out. You can kind of see the whole ride position, how it's changed now. So you're cruising down the road. It's just much better having the seat gives you a little bit of extra height to, to where your, your feet aren't like kind of in an awkward position trying to ride this thing sitting down. And cr actually just cruise on this thing now. Just sitting down, just getting it, just cruising. And then if y'all want to compare it to what it would be like without the seat, Flip that up, and then this would be, you'd be kind of just sitting a little bit more awkwardly like this, you know what I mean, while you're riding. The seat just gives you that extra height boost, boost to where you're locked in and just cruising now, ready to go. Pretty much all the, the race class is nothing but these wheels. Nothing but these wheels, like on, they're doing like GP, like go-kart tracks, and they are flying, dudes. But pretty much it's just these, the links, man, that are just running at the top, and the entire field's pretty much racing these exact wheels. But I wonder if anybody racing is using a seat. Um, I don't know. I, I don't see, if I don't know if there'd be any benefit to it. I wonder if anybody's got a technique where they're like cornering, maybe kind of using it a little bit. Be interesting to, to look at, but I think the way to run the links when you race is take everything off of it you don't absolutely need to get that weight down because this is such a lightweight wheel. If you just shave everything off, take the kickstand off, take the front flares off, everything off you don't need, man. It just makes this thing so light and it is such a powerful wheel that, you know, the, the power to weight ratio is what makes it epic so but i do like the seat man the seat's nice but it just doesn't lock in on the back so i'm telling you dude you crash this thing it's just whap, 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 whap. it's just gonna be like a big flap just hitting and slapping so that's that check it out this is what i've been riding bros look at this thing <laughs> all right this thing is so sick bro it, it is so fast too dude it is a full suspension you're right, it's just like skiing, but it's a mountain bike, guys. But you talk about going fast because it's all in one line. Your center of gravity is high on this thing, and you can get absolutely cooking down the mountain, dude. And all the little bumps and moguls and stuff you, you, you don't like when you're trying to snowboard, you got full suspension, dude. So you just kind of lean back and can jump off stuff and ride it in the woods so handlebars are real narrow on this thing so you can fit it between the tree to right there that's how much lowering you get you see those it's look like i mean 
straight up like OEM brackets. I think these are made by Leopard Chem, or I think they really are. They're, they look OEM to me. So let's take these things off and uh, get these new get these new uh, brackets on here. All right. So when you're putting on this lowering kit, guys, you want to take out these pedal rods on this wheel, and it's way, a little bit different on this wheel than a lot of the other ones. Undo these two screws right here, this cover will pop out. And then under here, you undo this screw. This is what's putting tension on that rod right there. Undo that bolt, and then this will, you just loosen this actually, you don't need to undo it, just loosen it, and it should let you pull this rod out. It should be able to tap that rod out this way. And same with this other side. So these rods used to go all the way across these pedals right here, all the way across the whole way. Now it's different. This is a, just an improved design, I think. Um, so same with this side. You gotta undo those two little screws that are right, right in here. And then loosen this. And then that rod will come out. I've never taken these pedals off of this links before, so I'll learn it with me. Right here, you don't have enough leverage, so just use an old school Allen wrench. Get under here, and it should pop right out. These are Loctited in there, so uh, you're gonna need to Loctite them again, most likely. Should stay right there. These stands are really nice to work on these wheels, man, because it's awkward trying to hold this thing up, prop it against a wall. Screws like that, just take something from the, the back side of it right here, and then just push. Oh, now I done tore something up, look at me. Look at this situation here. What have I messed up now? Have I torn something up? Yes, no I haven't, we're good. New to me, bro. The wheels were so, so the same for so long. Now it's completely new designs, bro. Like that's wow. That's so lightweight. Holy cow! You know, I do have an impact driver. Let's cut the bullshit. I will destroy something with this thing. Absolutely, have no mercy on any bolt. Everything will get stripped. There we go. Look at this. Uh oh, I'm about to do some damage, guys. I'm about to do some damage. Oh, look out. Now, this is the difference. All right, so these are the stock pedal brackets. Now these are lower pedal brackets. And now this is the difference. See that? It's not much of a difference, but you can see it will be a little bit lower. So that is, that's what you're getting right there. And that is a little bit, bro. That is honestly, I can make a big difference when it comes to racing these things on the road, tight corners. You know, that really could be the difference in saving yourself from wobbles. So that just shows how much it lowers it. It's not much, but it is a little bit. That's it right there, side by side. Down a little bit before we put these brackets on. A good time to get in here and wipe at least this part down. Spray cleaner polish, this stuff works really good. You can just spray it on there. And it, this stuff is like a, uh, kind of like a high gloss stuff. You just spray that on there like that. And it'll clean, it'll clean up everything real good. It's like a motorcycle cleaner for like the plastics, for everything on there. And then it'll wipe, it'll get all, all that stuff off. Have it shining up, looking good. Are they universal to where you, you can put these on either side? Are these exactly the same? See, I want to make that mistake so you guys don't have to do it. I would assume so. Those are exactly the same, right? It makes sense. There'd be no difference in these two. Right? Right. Right. Let's see. We'll find out. Go ahead and pre-Loctite every one of the screws. Boom, just a little bit on each one. I want to see what Leprechaun's gonna make next, man. Like, 
If they made something this good, I can't wait to see what will be next from them. There you go. Hand tight right there. Not going too too tight is what all you need on this. Boom. All right, that's good. Now we got to put just the pedals on there, the pedal back on there, and we should be good to go. All these little bolts that go on here, what you're going to want to do, don't over tighten them, but make sure you do use Loctite on them. And that's just kind of what I found out with all these electric unicycles, guys. Um, you can get new bolts. You know, E-Wheels is incredible about having, you know, these grub screws and these screws and all that type of stuff that you may need. But it's, it's best to keep them in good shape, lock tight them so you don't lose them, and don't over tighten them because, you know, you don't want to damage them. And you don't need to get these bolts on this machine too tight. I mean, you have eight bolts right here, for example, so, you know, none of them need to be extremely tight. You have eight holding it on there. And then this little, you see this little indention right here? This little indention is going to go down. That's where the grub screw tightens to, and this part goes outward. So pop this pedal on here, and I hope y'all can see pretty good what I'm doing. So this has, little notch is gonna go outward. There, it slides right in there. This piece right here is gonna go, and then that notch, of course, lines up with the other notch, but you gotta make sure that it's facing down the whole time. Notch, when it's in the down position, it looks like this, that keys up a little bit, slightly up towards the unicycle. So. Ow! <laughs> Here's the right tool for the job. Another screwdriver. Everything's a hammer. Everything's a hammer. That's the number one rule to DIY. Everything is a hammer. Except for screwdrivers, those are also chisels. Gotta be, oh Lord, I be trying to force things, dog. I be trying to force things, dog. <laughs> I think it needs to go this way, does it? Right? Oh, sh <laughs> There's grub screws already in there. That's why I won't go in. <sighs> this is why I can't have nice things. This is why I cannot have nice things. And these are different grub screws. These are smaller and I'm about to tear them up. Look at me. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. Oh my goodness. Yes, these are smaller grub screws. And I'm about to literally destroy them. Look at that little Jimmy right there. Look at him. All right, so the lowering brackets use different grub screws. So keep that in mind. You don't use the old same grub screws. There's new ones. Okay, yeah. There you go. Now see how that goes in there now without hammering it? <laughs> see, I just add force. Add force. So now that's tightening. Once you get it in there, these sides are proprietary. So these things, these little stoppers right here, you'll see, once you're working with them, you'll see exactly how that goes and everything. It's kind of, you gotta have hands on. This is my first time doing, working with one. I've never worked on the Patton. I never had the Sherman S, so this is my first time tinkering with this thing. You guys, up close what I'm doing right here, so y'all can see how this goes back together. A little bit better. All right. There is a new grub screw, guys. It's small. It's uh, way smaller than the other one, which is weird. You'd think it'd be the same size, but it's not. But it comes, it's already in there. So don't try to go hammering the rod through there. It's going to have that grub screw right there. It's not going to focus, but it is different. So now once that's removed, what you need to do, look for the flat spot right there. See how there's a little flat spot? That's where the grub screw goes into and pushes against. So you're gonna think about that like, all right, so the grub screw spot's right there. So this is gonna go in like this, of course. Should slide in fine. Again, you shouldn't have to hammer it or anything like I initially did. And then this little key right here, see that? That key is into that slot. See that little piece right there? That'll key right into that slot right here. And Loctite, this little screw for sure, dude. The, this has got to be Loctite. These little screws right here, so small. Hmm. 
And then you can tighten that one down, tighten this one down. Now, yeah, it did, it went all the way in. You want both of them to go, a way you can know that if it's on the flat spot like it should be, all, both of them should go as far into it, into, it should set as far into each side as the other side. So you shouldn't have one side out this farther. That means it's not on that flat spot, which means it's not gonna be hold as strong. And then these, you just got two Phillips screws that go into the back to hold this little, um, to hold that pin in there. Pretty long screws, but you know, Leopard Kim knows what they're doing. This is quality, that's, that's done right. Looks good. All right, so y'all can see what the lowering kit does. So this side has the lowering kit right here, and this side doesn't. These, and the pedals are all the way out. You can see how much, I want y'all to see how much of a difference that makes. It's a, it's a good bit lower, and you don't lose much. Well, of course, you know, the pedals are lower for off-road riding, but you don't lose much clearance under here, is what I'm getting at. You really don't. But that's the difference, if you look at it side by side. And that seat looks good. Got the seat on there. I like it. Well, I think this will definitely help and definitely be a huge advantage in racing and like any type of street racing or any type of street riding. But on off-roading, you know, your pedals are closer to rocks and roots. So just one thing to note. But I do think it'll be beneficial to get rid of those wobbles. All right, so I just got back from a ride testing out the lowering kit and testing out the seat on the Lynx. Guys, I really do like the lowering kit. The lowering kit really does work well. You do notice it. As soon as you, as soon as you get on the wheel, you're, you're cruising, you, you're like, ah, I don't really need to see a difference. As soon as you drop into a corner, guys, as soon as you, you know, kind of wrench on the brakes to get into a corner, you do notice it, guys. These really do help with eliminating a lot of those speed wobbles. You're breaking speed wobbles for hard cornering, guys, because the Lynx is a race wheel. This thing goes so fast that you don't realize how fast you're going into every corner, and you got to really, really break hard in your corners, guys, and this being... These pedals being up as high as they are stock, dropping them down a little bit does help a lot. Now, everybody out there that's racing the Lynx um, in any type of race circuit, this is a must, must have mod. I mean, I bet everybody out there that's, you know, podium finishing has done this, or, you know, most of them have. The lowering kit seriously helps a lot on the Lynx. The seat is awesome, dude. So, the seat. This is my favorite seat of any electric unicycle by far. Um, the height is perfect. And one thing to note that I, I really didn't think would be the case, uh, the lowering kit and the seat kind of work together because the lowering kit brings those pedals down just a little bit and the seat brings your rear end up a little bit and it kind of just works perfectly for seated riding, man. Like. Seated riding on this wheel feels so comfortable. Like my whole ride I just did, I, I didn't stand up. I literally just cruising, sitting down the whole time. Absolutely loving it, man. Just floating around on this thing. It feels, it feels great. Now, one thing to note, if you're gonna be racing this thing, guys, if you're strictly gonna be racing the links and you got this wheel as your race wheel and that's what it's for, I wouldn't get, I'm going to be real with you on this. I, I simply wouldn't get the seat because the seat, it is nice for everyday riding and stuff. But if I was to race the links, I would take it off. Because when you're coming in hard in your corners, guys, you've got to drop that rear end really low. And this does sort of get in the way with it. Once you get used to it and you get used to dropping your rear end all the way low to set up for your corners, this little extra bump right there sort of gets in the way. Now I think it's something you could possibly get used to and use to your advantage. It's just, you know, it's just rider preference. But with this on a hard crash, the one thing that makes me kind of worry is this thing is going to open up like this on a hard crash and it's just something else to get bent, something else to get damaged. Um, but it is amazing guys. If you're a rider out there that, that's not riding, you know, full send everywhere and doesn't crash all the time, you're going to love the seat. Absolutely love it.
And I really do like it a lot, guys. I mean, I really do. Because I, I have not been a seated rider much, man. But having the right height of seat, having a comfortable seat, uh, I could definitely see myself doing this a lot more. So I do like both of them, guys. But the lowering kit, definitely worth it. 100% worth it. For sure. And the, the Lynx has been awesome, dudes. I love the Lynx more and more every day. Every time I ride it, I like it more and more. Um, if y'all are on the fence about getting this wheel, I mean, just get it, dude. It is, it's better than any electric unicycle I've ever rode by miles. I mean, it really is. This is this, this right here is the flagship model of electric unicycles right now. I mean, it really is. You can't beat it. You cannot beat this thing. Uh, I've looked at a few videos and seen a few posts talking about the ET Max, and that, that looks like a stellar wheel, man. It looks very similar to this wheel, but what I've been seeing is people, once they get below like 50% battery on that thing, they're having problems with the thing, you know, having to ride the beeps on it when it's below 50% battery. And this thing is just fast all the time, guys. When I'm below 50% battery on it, I don't even bat an eye. I, I fully trust this Leprechaun wheel, and I ride it hard even at like 40% battery. I mean, I still, you know, full sin like Superman on my takeoffs. I brake hard, everything, even when my battery's getting low, and I don't worry about it. I really do trust this wheel, and it is, it's great, man. This thing is all around just top-notch, top-notch machine. And it's durable, man. It, the durability, I've wrecked this thing uh, about three hard times now, guys. The last crash I did was ridiculous, dude. So this thing has such powerful acceleration. One, I've never had a crash like this before in my life. I was literally in just a parking lot of like this little condo. I was staying up in uh, Steamboat Springs doing some snow, late season snowboarding and everything about a week ago. And... I came around a parking lot and I'd come through like a little bit of, it was like where some snow was melting in the parking lot and my tire got a little bit wet and I didn't realize my tire was wet and I went for like a hard acceleration kind of around the parking lot, like a sweeping acceleration and this parking lot was that smooth, slick blacktop and dude, I skidded, I'm talking I skidded probably straight 40 yards, I'm talking I went to accelerate and I just went into the gnarliest slide skid I've ever had in my entire life, guys. And this thing was just flexed out, full on drifting, guys. And I tried to stay up and I was the whole time I was like, oh, I was trying to stay up, trying to stay up. And it just slung me around and I just slammed. It's hard, dude, so hard right on my chest, bro. It hurts so bad. But the thing is, this thing is durable, dudes. Like this wheel is durable, it's fast. The acceleration is brutal on this thing, dude. So, you know, you gotta be careful. You know, this is the first wheel where you can literally break traction from a standstill, dude. Like if you're on a slick, slip, slick top surface or anything like that, you can, this thing is so powerful, you can just straight skid it, you know, out from under you. So this wheel is definitely one, like I said, man, this is the first electric unicycle I've ever had that has not held me back in any way, shape or form. And I've still, yet to tame this thing. And that, I've, I've been riding it now for five months or so, or you know, for, yeah, four or five months, and I've still yet to tame this wheel. The V13, I got that thing down, could, you know, get everything out of it. Um, you know, a lot of the other wheels, is, I'm kind of held back by their performance, but not this one, dudes. I'm still yet to be able to fully tame this wheel. But I just wanted to give y'all that little preliminary review of, <laughs> after the install of these two things because it is sick, dudes. But anyways, I got some more videos coming. I got some street riding, some trail riding, all that stuff coming up, guys. And uh, get this links out on some trails. Maybe even get a new wheel to review. We'll see. But anyways, I appreciate y'all watching. And if y'all want to pick up any of these accessories, any accessory for any wheel out there, um, link below, guys. Hit the e-wheels link. If you want to buy a new wheel, if you want to pre-order a new wheel, hit the e-wheels link. It gives me a little kickback and no extra cost to you. And I do greatly appreciate it. And it helps me keep making videos and more content for you guys. But anyways, it's been Chooch. I appreciate y'all watching. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.